Hi, I'm Anjali Bagra, an internist at Executive Health within Mayo Clinic. And I'm Dr. Susie Mosler, an anesthesiologist at Mayo Clinic. And we are joined today by Ms. Janine Kamath, who chairs Management Engineering and Consulting at Mayo Clinic. Welcome, Janine. Thank you. Thanks so much for being here. We certainly have enjoyed your conversation at the meeting. And uh, to help us and the listeners get a little more sense of you, can you tell us a few interesting things about yourself? Oh, of course. So I came from India to this country in my late 20s, and I've just enjoyed being here. I love to do a variety of things. I tend to take a lot of risks and really try different things. And if I fail, that's fine. I just pick up and move forward. That perhaps explains my multidisciplinary background. I have an undergrad in economics and statistics and psychology. And then I went into personnel management and organizational development and ended up with information and decision sciences. So quite the different things. But most of all, I would say I'm just a positive person, and I just love doing a variety of things, and I take risks. Well, you certainly, I mean, that did not sound like one person doing all of that <laughs> training. <laughs> that is fascinating. Um, you walked us through an amazing model of organizational grid yesterday, Thank live you. at uh, Grit for Women in Medicine at Ojai Valley in California. And I have to admit, there were so many wow moments that all of us had in the audience. What does grit mean to you? And then we'll move on to organizational grit, but what comes to your mind when you think of the word grit? So when I think of the word grit, I, I sort of put two or three things into that construct. One is when I think of grit, I think of vision and passion. Mm -hmm. Having a passionate vision followed by ideas and action. To me, grit is not just about dreaming, but it's also about doing. The other part of GRID, which I really like, is that it's dreaming and doing for a higher purpose. And for us in healthcare, that higher purpose is how do we relentlessly delight our customers, especially our patients. So to me, that would be GRID. Passion and action with purpose. I love that definition of GRID. Yeah, certainly. And so because Anjali and I are physicians and we understand that little part of the healthcare system, yeah. but in your role as management engineering, which is a mouthful, and certainly you've had a lot yes. of education and training, and can you explain that certainly to us, what that sure. means sure. Um, in your day-to-day -day and then in the overall organization and structure? Absolutely. I'd be happy to do that. So I think what I do is I'll just break it down into a couple of pieces. So management engineering is really, on one hand, I would say, more of systems thinking from a patient-centric perspective. What we do is we partner with uh, professionals like both of you to really look at how do we bring the entire patient experience together, integrate it so that their journey through healthcare is really very positive. It's not just the times when they see the physicians or the nurses or other providers. It's right from the time that they interact with the healthcare organization. It's really important that they, ha they have patients have an integrated, great, happy experience that they can take back. So what management engineers do is they really try to connect the dots, I say simplistically, across the patient journey. So sometimes when I think about technology or AI, um, it feels like the opposite of interaction or the human interaction right. with the patient. Um, but you, in yesterday, you talked about how actually that's, it will improve in connection and mm -hmm. maybe the humanness. Can you Absolutely. speak a little on that? Oh, I'd be happy to. And I want to take it from two dimensions. I want to take it from the dimension of care, but I'd also like to take it from the dimension of those who are providing care, like our staff. Mm -hmm. So I think AI mm -hmm. is going to impact both. Another variation of that is robotic process automation or machine learning. So there's so many different components. And I think that's going to impact our staff as well as impact our patients and our customers. And in my talk yesterday, one of the things I wanted to emphasize, and I think it's because we all feel this is just going to be so machine driven and yes. so hard that I think it's really important for us to architect. And it's very possible all of these new, exciting digital opportunities in a way 
that it's humanistic in a way that we consider the human aspect of this. And I just love the quote that Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, um, mentioned when he was talking, I think this was to the graduates at MIT, when he said, it's so important that it's not just the likes that we touch, but the lives mm -hmm. that we touch. So we're so used to all the likes that we click, yeah. but he emphasized that in addition to that, it's the lives we touch. And in healthcare, we have that tremendous opportunity. So I would say to me, having that human element is gonna be really critical in AI, and it will be magic if we can bring together the human element with the technology to deliver the best care to our patients. Absolutely. I think you had a very profound effect on all of us when you, A, mentioned about dreaming and doing. Thank you. Um, I thought that was a fantastic way to think about this. The other thing you mentioned, which was very uh, emphatic and clear to me personally, was how organizational grit is a composite of individual grit of people yes. who make up that organization. Right. right. Um, so we'd love for you to expand on that for our oh, listeners. Oh, thank you. So I would say, I mean, you know, people are the greatest asset of any organization. So the organization is only going to be as good or not as its people. I want to add another part to this, and that is also the teams. Because you can't do it alone today. You have to work in teams. And I know both of you mm -hmm. work in teams as well and depend a lot on your teams and yeah. vice versa. Absolutely. Yes. We are very yeah, team fortunate. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Team, there we go. So I would really like to look at it as individual team grit all coming together to really then build that organizational grit. Mm -hmm. Being a systems person, I can't leave out the fact that you also have to think of the infrastructure. Yes. We want to build a gritty infrastructure. And what I mean by that is great equipment, great processes, great systems, because they all need to come together mm -hmm. in order to build organizational grit. But yesterday, I focused a little bit more on individuals and teams mm -hmm. to build organizational grit. You know, I wondered, I was reflecting during your talk, as a physician, I have limited understanding of how systems work. I feel like our patients know more about these processes and how procedures, to navigate, right? you know, how to navigate. But as yeah. a provider, I, I, what are some ways that we as providers can be educated or stay on top of this. Sure, sure. So the magic here really is that we don't want you to know about it. <laughs> <laughs> For job security? No, <laughs> no. Just because we want you to focus on uh, what you need to focus on because you are already so busy. It's so, you just have so many things that you're trying to manage. And what we want to do is behind the scenes, make it as seamless and wonderful as we can for our staff, for our providers, for our patients, everybody who comes together in that setting. So really, we would prefer that you don't have to worry about so it. So I'm, I'm not the only one who's a bit clueless on processes no, 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 and no, you're no, validating you that. Yeah. No, well, we are no. certainly grateful for the work that you do behind the scenes. Um, and thank you for allowing us to invite you and be seen at the conference and to share your knowledge. So can you, in maybe two or three kind of take home points or I mean, there were so many great things, and I think that the, it's great to dream, mm -hmm. and we need to do to innovate was particularly, as Anjali mm -hmm. said, um, important. Thank but I you. know you have multiple other things um, oh, well. to share before we okay. part today. Okay, okay, okay. I will pick two or three things to share Perfect. with you. Um, one of them that, just based on my work, I'm seeing there's so much change going on all around us and it's happening faster and faster and faster. So I think one of the things that happens is all of us tend to get really overwhelmed. And one of the messages that I would mm. say is that it is true. There's a lot going on when we look at our personal and professional life. But I think it's really important to look at the fact that all of this uncertainty and ambiguity is really a flip side of opportunity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, could all of us look for what are the opportunities in this, this whole, what might seem like a slightly chaotic and overwhelming kind of internet speed mm -hmm. um, world. So that's one thing I will say. I, of course, cannot forget the whole dreaming and doing part, as both of you have mentioned. Mm -hmm. So I want to just emphasize how important that is that, you know, 
we need to keep acting. And what I would say is it doesn't have to be big. Mm -hmm. Small actions sustained over and over. And the wonderful thing about that is that every time we do something, we learn and we do it even better the next time and mm -hmm. we build on it. So I just, that would be another key takeaway in terms of what, what might be something that came out from my talk. I think clearly the whole humanistic aspect of it, there's so much change in technology that we cannot forget that at the end of the day, it's us human beings and the human spirit that we're really looking at. I also want to talk a little bit about innovation because I think it's, it sometimes just seems like a word that's really far away from us. But I would just say innovation is, doesn't have to be like the, the greatest idea. Any idea that you have and you have passion behind it, explore it, move it further, fail fast. If it doesn't work, it's okay. There'll be another idea that you can move forward with. So that would be another takeaway that I would have um, for everyone to be thinking about. Finally, I'll say, in the spirit of innovation, often we think I can never do this or my team could never do this, but what we've heard is that often people think something is impossible until it's done. Right. And, we, <laughs> and we know there's so many impossible things that have been done. And if you'd let me have one more, yeah, I would course. say it's so important for us to have fun Mm -hmm. and to take care of ourselves. And speaking to two physicians, I would say humor and laughter is a great medicine. Well, that was so well summarized. I have no words uh, to add to that. Thank you so very much, Thank Janine, you for, for joining us. Here. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Wow.